After I'd been on the streets with my mother and my brother, when I came to like live with my grandmother, literally she set the tone when I got off the bus from her and you know she hugged me, made sure I was okay, and she looked at me and said, Nikki, you're fortunate enough to live in a different America than the America I was born into, to the greatest generation of women that will ever have been born up until this time. What are you going to do with it? And you know, this idea of serving others, she was a living example of that because um, no matter how little we had, she always told me to be grateful and that other people had less than us. And that I wouldn't be, ch that she thought I was going to do amazing things in the world, but that I wasn't going to be judged by the success that I had, but by the success that I helped other people to have. Mm -hmm. Now, growing up the way that I did, I felt alone a lot of times in terms of what it was that I was trying to achieve. And, you know, my grandmother was great at pushing me, but she was also pushing me to do something that she didn't really have a lot of familiarity with. Right. And so, you know, it was hard on this path because I didn't know if I was doing the right thing or, you know, if things that seemed really tough, if they should be as tough as they seemed to be. And so I wish I had seen someone who'd gone through some of the things that I was going through who could say to me, it's going to be okay, it does get better, you can have success. I think I wrote about it um, in the Huffington Post article when I was talking about in defense of working class whites, that there are certain things that are core truth to us and that part of that is that race um, doesn't matter and that socioeconomics doesn't matter. It's about the kind of person you are that matters. And um, I know what it's like to be voiceless and I know what it's like to have a platform. And the truth is fundamentally, I'm not a different person. Mm -hmm than I was. The world may see me differently, but who I am and my core values really haven't changed. It's just I've gotten this platform that allows my voice to be magnified. Here's the thing, I don't have to agree with someone to advocate for their right to believe what it is that they want to believe. And I do have concerns that I feel like we are getting away from that um, as a country, as a society. And, you know, truthfully, I did get some backlash from people who said, well, why are you standing up for working class white people? And I'm like, because those are plenty, there's plenty of people who stood up for me who didn't look like me. And I think that's, it's a sad commentary that the criticism really isn't what I said, but the fact that I was willing to stand up for people who didn't look like me. But would I have the life, would I have the rights, would I have the education that I have without other people who didn't look like me being willing to stand up? And, and to be honest, I think that the division hurts my community more than helps it. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep African Americans separated, like, you know, we are on the negative side of a lot of really bad statistics. And so keeping us separated doesn't have, give us access to wealth and opportunities. And so to me, you know, bridging the gap, I believe, is the right thing to do. But I also think it's the smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people to have access. I want race not to matter as much. Not to say that you shouldn't be proud of who you are, but it shouldn't determine right. whether you have success in right. life or not.